Boy, we got a lot of kids today. I'm going to check if my microphone stays on because it, it turned itself off. I don't know why. Here, you got a little space for me over here? Tegan, can I scooch in here? All right. Excellent. Boy, big crowd today. Are you excited about our Christmas craft, Advent craft program going on today? That'll be fun. All right. You know, when I was in college, uh, I used to work on road construction. Can you just picture me doing road construction with a hard hat and a jackhammer and all that? Yeah, that was me. I was out there making all that noise. Can you think, what is it that you have to do if you're making a road? Because really, when you think about it, making a road is a pretty, pretty straightforward idea. If you were making a road, let's say if you were in the sandbox, and you wanted to make a road in the sandbox, how would you do it? What do you think? Um, it would be silly. You, your car would just fall down. Yeah, it would just kind of sink in the sand, right? Yeah. yeah. But if you wanted to, uh, if, you were, if you were trying to make a road, what, what would you want to do with that road? What? Um, uh, try and drive as many cars on it. Try to drive as many cars on it as you could, but before you drove cars on it, let's say if it was all bumpy, what would you have to do? Flatten it. Flatten what? it. What would you have to do? Flatten it. Flatten it. Okay, so make it smooth, right? So if you were making the road smooth and there was a high place, what would you want to do with that high place? What? Flatten it. Yeah, flatten it. So make it, make it go down. And if there was a low place, a big hole in the road, what would you want to do with that? What? Uh, fill it in. Yeah, fill it in. And what did you say? Make it a little higher. Make it a little higher, right. So road repair, when you think about it, is just doing two things. You take the low places and you make them higher. And you take the high places and you make them lower. And when you do that, then you make a nice smooth road so that your car can go over it and it won't be too bumpy. What? And then you make cars. And then you make cars. That's the last part of the problem, yeah. And then you go inside of your car. And then you go inside of your car. Right, and then you get out the Cheerios and make a big mess in your car, right? And, and, yeah. you, and you have a garage to put your car in. Sometimes. That's the hardest part, yeah, getting a garage and a house and all that, yeah. I see you guys are really thinking ahead. This is good, it's good. Our garage is messy. What's that? Our garage is messy. My garage is messy too, yeah. <laughs> I'm glad to know I'm not alone. So why are we talking about roads? Well, there was a, an old guy who lived a long, long time ago, and his name was Isaiah. And he talked about preparing the way of the Lord. And John the Baptist heard what Isaiah said, and he said, that means prepare the way for Jesus. And, and what Isaiah said is, every valley shall be filled, and every mountain shall be brought low, so that we can prepare a way for our God to come. Now, I think that Isaiah and John the Baptist were not so much talking about real mountains and real valleys as much as they were talking about the way that you prepare a place in your heart. Sometimes there are people who feel really low. They feel really down. We want to lift them up. So if you're feeling sad or you have a friend who's feeling sad, let's try to lift them up and help them to feel better. Or sometimes there are people who have too much and they need to share it. So those are like mountains that need to be brought low. Or sometimes there are people who think that they're so great that they're, um, I don't know, they're kind of full of themselves, right? And, and so Jesus is saying, let's take those high places where we're maybe too proud and bring it down a notch. And take the people who are feeling sad and see if we can lift them up. And when we do that, then we're preparing a highway for our God. Let's stand and make a circle in prayer. Lots of kids today. I really like to see so many people here. I think you make Jesus happy too when he sees that many people come together. Look at the screen. 
Did, some, did one of you do that? No. Did you spill something? George, really? Oh my goodness, and Tristan too. All right, you're gonna have to clean that up, all right? <laughs> Lord Jesus, we pray that we can prepare a highway for our God. Help us to prepare a road in our heart in which you may enter by the way that we treat others, by the way we share what we have, by the joy and the kindness that we show other people, let us prepare a way on which our God may come. In Jesus we pray. Amen. All right. Good job, guys. The scripture today is from Isaiah chapter 40, verses 1 through 11. Comfort, O oh comfort, my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to hear that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. Penalty is paid for all her sins. A voice cries out, in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places made plain. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all people shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out, and I say, what shall I cry? All people are grass, their, con their co constancy is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, when the breath of the Lord blows upon it, surely the people are the grass. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get up to a mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up, do not fear. Say to the cities of Judah, here is your God. See the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. His reward is him, and his recompense before him. Before will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms, and carry them in his bosom, and greatly lead, and gently lead the mother sheep. Thank you, David. The second lesson today comes from the Gospel according to Mark. In fact, this is the very beginning of the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verse 1. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in the prophet Isaiah, See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make his paths straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And the people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now, John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and ate locusts and wild honey. And he proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And here ends our there reading. There are lots of parts of the Bible that can be difficult for us to figure out. Which isn't surprising when you think about it. Lots of images in the Bible are very remote from our own experience, right? After all, you've got a book that was written thousands of years ago at many different times throughout history and many uh, different, uh, it was a very different cultural context. There were different religious rituals and different ethical standards and different laws. Uh, it's an ancient, ancient language that we uh, don't understand. Uh, even just some of the basic images we can try to understand, but it's kind of difficult to really understand, for example, the image of a, of a leper who was in exile from the community. We can try to relate to that, but we weren't there, and we don't really know what that was like. Or, or what was that 
problem that was existing between the Jewish people and the Samaritans, and there was this long-standing feud. And so we try to grasp some of these things, but it can be difficult. But once in a while, when you read the Bible, you come across an image that needs no explanation, an image that we really understand. An image that we really can relate to. And today, this morning, we have one of those biblical images that is just made for the people of Ohio. An image that Ohioans really get. Road repair, right? That's one that we can figure out pretty easily. Um, you know, when you think about it, as I mentioned, road repair is a pretty straightforward thing. You take the low places and you make them high. You take the high places and you make them low. And John the Baptist quotes what he heard from the prophet Isaiah in chapter 40. A voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, every mountain and hill made low. And the uneven ground shall become level and the rough places a plain. And then... The glory of the Lord shall be revealed in all people. All people shall see it together. So John the Baptist, echoing the words of the prophet Isaiah, calls the people to prepare the way of the Lord in their own lives. Advent could be considered this way. Think of it this way, that your soul is a construction zone. Advent is the time to put up the orange barrels around your heart. Advent is the time to put up a sign on your heart that says, under construction, right? Put on the hard hats of the spiritual life and prepare the highway for our God. Advent is a time of spiritual road repair. A time to pull out the spiritual bulldozers and knock down the mountains of pride and arrogance or selfishness and to raise up the, the valleys of poverty and hurt and loneliness. As I mentioned in the children's sermon, when you reduce it to its simplest term, terms, that's all road repair really is. And sometimes that can be a big job because you've got big mountains to move. But basically, you just want to raise up the low places, knock down the high places. And spiritual road repair is about that as well. Bring down the mountains of pride and selfishness and egoism. When you look at... Um, um, the work that John the Baptist did, his ministry. Uh, he brought low a few mountains. Look at some of the words that he said in Matthew chapter 3. When John saw the Pharisees and the Sadducees coming for baptism, he said to them, You brood of vipers, who warned you to flee from the wrath to come? And do not presume to say to yourselves, We have Abraham as our ancestor. For I tell you, God is able to raise from these, God is able from these stones to raise up children to Abraham. It's like, wow. Okay, John the Baptist is lowering a few mountains there, people who thought themselves pretty big. But spiritual road repair is also about raising up the valleys and the low places. Look at the ministry of Jesus of Nazareth. He took people like Zacchaeus or Matthew, tax collectors who were shunned by the Jewish community, and lifted them up and said, I want to be with you, I want to stay with you. And he raised them up. The sinners... The lepers, the outcasts in the communities, the Samaritan woman at the well, all of those people whom his society, his culture said, you shouldn't hang out with these people, don't spend any time with them. And Jesus said, I don't like those rules. I do want to spend time with them. And he lifted them up. I think about in, in, in Luke chapter 13, Jesus comes across a woman who is stooped over symbolic of the oppression that women have suffered throughout the centuries. This woman who was unable to stand up straight for 18 years, 18 years, and Jesus comes to her, takes her by the hand, and lifts her up and straightens her out, saying, stand tall and proud and strong. These are the people whom Jesus lifted up, right? Jesus asks us to raise the low places of our, of our weakness and our inadequacy, and God's Spirit fills us and raises us up. Jesus lowers the high places of our arrogance and our pride. But spiritual road repair, when you think about it, needs to go beyond just taking care of ourselves. It also needs to extend outward into the community to lower the mountains 
of greed, and selfishness, of consumerism, of accumulating too much for ourselves, and sharing that, right? In a world where there is still so much hunger, and yet so much food actually goes to waste, we need to look at ways that we can lower those mountains of greed and share with others to raise up the poor and the oppressed. And the church's presence has to extend outward to those who are in need, to hospitals, nursing homes, to prisons, to gang members, to the hungry, to the unemployed, to the poor. And if you look at some of the works that this congregation has done, in this local congregation, just look at some of the things that we've done over the past few months. A few weeks ago, the back pew there was filled with oatmeal and applesauce. Every one of those boxes of oatmeal, every one of those jars of applesauce is going to go into a basket of food to be delivered around Christmas time to help families who are in need. How many times have you collected for the Feed My Sheep soup kitchen? The last time we were collecting cans of, of creamed soup. And again, these are ways that we reach out to help people who are in need. People of this congregation have adopted a group of children, about 10 children, will receive clothing and Christmas gifts to make their Christmas more joyful because of this community reaching out to give them a hand and help them out. The Greenleaf Family Center now, for the 45th year in a row, they're receiving cookies that you have baked. And the lives of 75 families in our community will may, be made a bit brighter because of the outreach that people in this community are doing. These are the ways that we can lift up people, that we reach out to lift up those who are in the valley of sadness or despair. This is the kind of spiritual road repair that Mary spoke about. The mother of Jesus said in Luke chapter 1, He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. So Advent is this time to do that spiritual road repair, to construct a highway in which God may enter in our lives and in our community. And I'd like to tell you about a road that got repaired in El Salvador, the road to San Benito. And how one man single-handedly repaired that road and changed his life in the process. I went around to a bunch of different communities in El Salvador. One of them was San Benito. And, and I've got a, a few pictures here from San Benito. This is a, a family in uh, San Benito. Uh, the, the, the people who lived there, of course, were extremely poor. Most of their homes didn't even have a floor, just a dirt floor. They lived in some very simple homes. So this is the inside of one of the homes. Let me show you the outside of another home. This would be a typical home there of the people in San Benito. No electricity, no running water. El Salvador was also a place of tremendous violence. It was, literally, statistically, the, the most violent place on the planet for the whole time that I was there, with more homicides than any other place uh, on earth. And uh, that violence was a very real part of our ministry. Hardly a week went by that I didn't have a funeral for someone who had been murdered. Um, so when the San Benito, when the road was good, you could get there in a four-wheel drive vehicle. It took about an hour. If we could go to the next picture, this is the, uh, the, the church building in San Benito. Now, uh, I wish that I had a, a picture of the road there. Um, but basically, if you look over that guy's left shoulder on the right side of the screen. You see the mountains in the background? That's where I lived, okay? So to get from to San Benito from there, you had to go down this very deep valley and, and, and back up the mountain to the other side, right? So it was basically just down, down, down to the river and then up, up, up the other side. And that was the road to San Benito. It was a very uh, difficult uh, drive, a dirt road. And at the end of the rainy season, you just couldn't even drive it at all. You, it was just a complete disaster and you had to uh, uh, either walk it or take a horse. The people in this little community and this little chapel here were terrorized one week when a drunk by the name of Elias came and started throwing stones, large stones, like softball-sized ones, at the people in the church 
And so they barricaded themselves inside. I would get out to this community about once a month. Uh, but in the meantime, a couple times a week, they would have Bible study services, worship services uh, without me uh, that were led by the lay leaders in their community. And it was during one of those services that Elias came and attacked them. They barricaded themselves in the church to protect themselves. But he continued to, to throw the stones and, and, and did a, a, a good bit of damage to the building and to the, to the doors. They came and they told me about that, and together we, we decided, well, we got to tell the police and file charges for, for his misconduct uh, and for his threats that he had made. It was only a week after that that a very similar uh, attack happened, but this time the guy tried to set fire to the wood in the building while the people were, again, barricaded inside the building. So now you had two weeks and two times that this community at prayer had been attacked. Well, we filed charges against Bernardo also. Bernardo was the one who tried to set fire to the church. So now you've got kind of two um, situations that happened not very far apart that were very similar. Elias' attack and Bernardo's attack. But their response was completely different. Bernardo responded by saying that he wanted to kill me and he wanted to kill the leader of the community, the lay leader of the community. Now, that was not an unusual response. After, a, you know, I remember the first time somebody said they were going to kill me, I was like, oh, dear, you know, I'm writing a farewell letter and everything. And later on, you realize, well, they say this a lot, you know. Uh, and it is scary because you do see people getting killed around you uh, all over the place. And, um, but it was the specificity of Bernardo's claims that, 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 that got my attention. Uh, he, he went out and got a gun. And he kept saying to a lot of people that he was going to shoot me. And in fact, the, uh, the guy with the general store in Teotepeque, our little village, um, refused to sell Bernardo bullets because he's like, well, I don't want to be part of this, you know? So no, you're not buying any bullets from me. Um, and uh, so, you know, uh, that's Bernardo's response to the situation. Elias' response was very different. Elias came, and he wanted to sit down and talk with me. And he said he felt terrible about what he had done, and he wishes he could take it back. And he apologized. And I, and I commended him for that, but I said, Elias, you didn't offend me. You offended that whole community. And so you need to be reconciled with them. And so I sat down with the leaders in that community of San Benito. This is one of them. And uh, I said, I think that it would be good if Elias did some community service project. And what we decided was to have Elias fix up that road all the way from the river up to the chapel. And I remember, well, I was the one who brought it up in the first place, and the, the, the leaders looked at me like, are you serious? Like, that's a pretty big community project, you know, uh, to do that. We proposed that to Elias, and he accepted it without batting an eye. And the next day, he was out there with a shovel and a pick, and he was fixing up that road. And he kept returning there week after week until that road was fixed. And I was able to drive my car down that road. Um, not many cars went down that road, maybe four or five a day at most. But, um, but when I drove to that community to worship with them the next time, I was amazed at the good job that Elias had done repairing that road. He was there in the chapel. He stood up and he publicly apologized for the wrong that he had committed. And he was publicly welcomed by me and by the other leaders in that community. And he received communion. It was amazing, the reconciliation that took place. Meanwhile, Bernardo continued to escalate his threats and he actually shot one of the leaders of the San Benito community twice in the chest. I uh, went over there to provide transportation for this leader, took him uh, to the hospital in the capital city of San Salvador, and uh, he, he, he did survive the, the two bullet wounds in his chest. When the police finally got out to San Benito three days later, of course, Bernardo was gone, and now he had fled his community. He, he, he was a fugitive, and... Uh, Two situations that began very similarly, 
but ended very differently. Elias had not only prepared a highway, a roadway, he had prepared a path in his heart on which God could come. Elias' reconciliation was complete, whereas Bernardo remained alienated from the community and exiled by his own anger and violence. The major road repairs took place not so much on the physical roadway, but Elias had prepared the way of the Lord in his heart, in which God could travel into his soul and into his community. And he accepted as clearly as anyone I've ever known the challenge of John the Baptist and Isaiah to prepare a highway for our God. Each of us can make the same choice, can't we? Each one of us have the option to prepare the way, as Elias did, to prepare the way of the Lord, to repair the way of peace on which God may enter in our hearts and in our world, or to fill it with more ruts and more potholes, as Bernardo did, to hold on to our hurt and to our anger, to create more violence, more tears, more division. So this Advent, let's put up this sign on our hearts, spiritual road repair going on here. This is what we are about, road construction ahead. Humble yourself this week. Share with someone who is in need. Lift someone up this week by doing something simple but extraordinary to perhaps bring a smile and some joy into their lives. Let's fill up the valleys of hunger, both physical and spiritual. Let's lower the mountains of arrogance or greed. Let's build a road on which God may travel to enter into our lives and to enter into this community and to change the world in which we live as we prepare the way of the Lord.